It was a, lo a very long few days, and Sam isn't known for his drinking. He was he was struggling on through, but he, he stayed in. But then he said, oh, he, he made an excuse up or something about he got the day wrong and then he had something on. So really, I think he just had enough. Like He, was, he, he, he tapped was, he was out there. He it tapped before. out there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You listen to the way he talks or how how much he prepares himself, you know, he's a proper professional and, you know, he, he gets his reward on the field on a Saturday and that's why he's played over 100 test matches um, and, and 100 test matches for his country, you know. So it's um, it's credit to him, the hard work he puts in and, you know, he sets standards for, you know, everyone really. I think as a group in, you know, with, with us in Wales, we have some players with a lot of caps, but I think, you know, those are the boys who are keeping driving the standards for us to get better every day. And, you know, George is certainly one of those players and, you know, I'm far happier he's on my team than than playing against him, let's put it that way. Yeah, that's much more eloquent than uh, when Sam Warburton introduced the interview that he did with you, George, on the BBC at the weekend. I think he just said, hello, my big sexy centurion, which, which was uh, <laughs> disturbing in, in many ways. Is that how you speak to each other? Well, first and foremost, cheers, Fox. I'll, I'll give you that 50 quid. Yeah, no worries at all, but no worries at all. I think I think Warby has um, worked out that he was far better at talking than he is Jacqueline. So, and I think he just got a little bit too excited, didn't he? And um, he doesn't get excited too often now, mind you. So it's it's good that it's good that you made him like that, George. <laughs> <laughs> no, he got all giddy yeah. and he got all excited. So, but it, it was nice because obviously Warby. Um, one of my one of my best mates in, in rugby. He I think he just got all giddy. I don't know what got came over him. Maybe the, maybe the coffee kicked in or something. I don't know. I actually remember I was walking to the paddock at the Monaco Grand Prix a couple of years ago, and it was your stag weekend, and I passed you all, and it was just like The Walking Dead, and he was one of them. And he'd got the day of the Grand Prix wrong. He thought the the Grand Prix happened on a Saturday, so he'd booked the the flight home on the wrong day or something. It was. It, it looked just a bit of a mess, but in a good way. My best, my best man Scott had done a very good job of that one. Uh, I, I like my, I like my Formula One. I like my racing. I like my cars and motorbikes. But um, yeah, it was a lot, a very long few days. And Sam isn't known for his drinking. He was, he was struggling on through, but he, he stayed in. But then he said, oh, yeah, he, he made an excuse up or something about. He got the day wrong, and then he had something on. So really, I think he just had enough. Like he was, he, he was, tapped he was out there. He tapped before. out there. Tell yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, after three, four, almost four days, he had tapped out. Can't really, do that but, on the um, stag, lads. You have nah, to stay till the nah. end, and that's it. He looked like he was at the end. You've been watching the House of Rugby season three on Joe.